What's up? What's up? Nothing much. How are you? I'm doing all right. Can't complain. Things are Very good. good. Very How good. Very good. Not too bad. It's hot, but at least <laughs> we don't have any dust right now, so I have to give thanks. Oh, that clear up now? That's clear. For now, for now. We're supposed to get a second wave, but I haven't seen it yet, and really and truly, I don't want to see it, so yeah. I'll just leave that there. <laughs> Well, welcome to Real Talk. Thanks for having um, me. Excited to be here. Absolutely. I'm excited to have you as well. So, guys, I was just about to get into how I met Kamir. Um, it's not a funny story, a blonde story, like my first story. But <clears throat> um, actually, I was looking for um, places to mentor. And so I literally just Googled or searched, you know, um, mentorship in Jamaica and different sites or different places came up and I stumbled upon the Minds of Initiative and when I found that page I went onto the page and I literally I think I sent I, I sent the Instagram page first a direct mm -hmm. message and said hey how do I join in on this initiative and reached out and through that page, through the Minds of Jamaica Instagram page, if you're not following them guys, go and follow them now, right? Through that page, I actually met Kamir, right? And um, not knowing anything about it, read through the About Us on the page itself and found that they've been doing some really amazing things. Found out as well that Kamir has been doing some really great things, guys. Let me just tell you quickly, right? Because he doesn't really like to talk about it that much, I'm sure. But he is a PhD candidate currently for Cornell Medicine. He is a Prime Minister Youth Awardee for 2018. He's the founder of Minds of Jamaica. So that same site I spoke about, he's actually the founder of that initiative. He was the um, one of the Ignite 30 Under 30 awardees. And he's also a very proud Herbert Morrison alumni. You can't forget that one, right? They're not. You can't. And then most recently, he actually, him as well as some other volunteers, created the All Clear app that helps persons find COVID testing sites, which is really amazing. Yeah. So really great job. Um, thank you so much for joining us appreciate today. It, appreciate it. So before we start, we have the hard-hitting questions of my quick fire. Okay. They're not hard hitting questions, okay? <laughs> All right, so let's go. What's your favorite color? Favorite color is blue. Blue, okay. Yeah, very, um, very original. Yeah, I mean, actually, my favorite <laughs> color is blue. Like this light blue hair is my favorite color, actually. Um, let's see. When you were younger, what did you want to be when you grew up? Uh, when I was younger, I wanted to be an architect. An architect. Yeah, my dad. My dad has a, had a construction company, so it just made sense in my head that you know I'll just be an architect, work with my pops, and you know keep it pushing. So. Okay. So. Well, sorry. I think my battery was dying. Okay. Yes. Um, I'm good. So if you could get on a plane right now, which you know travel is not really a thing, but if you could travel, where would you travel to? Jamaica. <laughs> Jamaica. Jamaica. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. I'm in New York City for those who don't know. So, yeah, definitely want to come home. Okay, now we're in a better than yard. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, let's see. What is your favorite meal? Favorite meal? Who? Axel, 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 rice and peas and Axel, yeah. Okay, real, real, rice and peas. Real, and real, and real hard to... mm -hmm. Okay, all right. And you want the gravy on the rice? Then no more. Okay, because you can't oxtail, you know, without gravy on rice. <laughs> no dry rice. Okay, all right. Um, what is your go-to movie or series? Go-to series is The Office. I rewatch The, the Office. The Office? Yeah, constantly. Okay, yeah. all right. Have you seen it? No, I never watched that, actually. People right. have told me about it, but never watched it. Yeah, you need to, you need to watch it. I guess after this, I'll probably <laughs> test that one out. I watch... Billions. Billions. I don't know that one. Billions is re really good. Like you should, you should watch that one. That is about like 
it's uh, almost like um somebody who's on wall street so it's all about finance and the business world and and mm. yeah. yeah okay all right let's see what is uh, or what is your dream career if you're not already in that field my dream career uh I think it's really it's, it's, it's really a mix of the kind of things I'm doing. So being someone who's an innovator in technology, but doing a lot of social good, I think is just where you know I want to be at. So whatever form that takes, that's something you know that I'm passionate about. So. Okay. Okay. All right. So that's really my quick five questions. Very simple. Very easy. <laughs> so come here. Thank you for joining us again. No to get everybody into it because I went and I gave them a little snapshot of what yeah. you've been doing for the years. But give us a little bit of an idea of your journey and how you have gotten to the point now where you created an app and you're also a PhD candidate. Yeah, um, so I, I'm from Montego Bay. Grew up there, went to Herbert Morris Technical High where I really got into uh, the sciences, right? So even when I was in primary school, my parents, they bought me back when encyclopedias were a thing. My parents got me encyclopedias and science books just to expose me to, to, to different things. And I really got into science while I was at Herbert Morrison. But then, you know, the, the, the standard kind of story of, you know, getting your first computer and learning how to break it down and build it back together and, and so on got me really into IT and information technology. And um, I really wanted to explore that as well. So I was, you know, getting into the sciences, getting into IT. A lot of people were pushing me. A lot of teachers were pushing me to go be a doctor because, you know, once you do sciences in Jamaica, you have to be a doctor, a medical yeah. doctor, um, apparently. So, but I knew that wasn't for me. So I, while I was in sixth form, I enrolled in um, the College of uh, Heart, well, CIT, it used, to be, used to be called CIT, Caribbean Institute of Technology, now it's called Heart College of Innovation and Technology. But uh, while I was in sixth form, I would do my science care subjects during the day. And then I would go to evening classes and do IT programming, networking, that kind of stuff. Because my parents are always big on exploring your interests, right? So you think right. this is something you want to do, even though it might require a lot, a lot of extra work. Like, obviously, I didn't want to ideally go to two schools at once. But okay. you really want to put yourself in a situation to figure out if that is a thing. You, you know, does it sound nice or do you really, you know, are you really interested in it? Mm -hmm. So I did that and re that really kind of solidified and reinforced my interest in that, but I was still kind of looking at those as two very different careers, right? So I'm either going to stick with the sciences, and at the time I was thinking I'll be, you know, a scientist, a research scientist, mm -hmm. or I would have to pick IT and either go be a system administrator or a programmer, software developer, something like that. Very different path. So after high school, I, I, I went to Herbert, um, I went to University of Georgia to do my bachelor's. And okay. that's where I discovered during a conversation with a professor there, I was kind of talking about this dilemma, right? Trying to figure out what I want to do. Like it was really almost a flip of, flip of a coin to decide if I wanted to major in microbiology and minor in computer science or major in computer science and minor in right. microbiology. Because okay. I really didn't know where I wanted to go. And he was, he, he basically looked at me and was like, why do you have to choose? Like there's something called bioinformatics. There's something called computational biology that blends those two fields together. And at that moment was a spark. Because here is somebody putting on my radar something I did not know exists that you know allows me to pursue both of my interests yeah and that was a yeah. very enlightening and relieving um, moment for me I immediately called my mother she you know by the time I reached back to my dorm she already sent me websites or tell you how much a computational biologist makes and what they do wow. and blah 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 so from there you know I had that focus now that is where I think I was going to 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 go so I started you know I did undergraduate research in in computational biology and then decided after I got my bachelor's that I wanted to go, you know, all the way. And anything I do, I think if you can go as far as you can, um, pursue it as, as, as far as you can. So I was like, you know, I'm going to go for the PhD and I actually okay. skipped my master's. So a lot of people think you have to go bachelor's, master's, then PhD. I went bachelor's, skipped the master's and went straight to a PhD. And that's where I am now in New York at Wild Cornell Medicine doing a PhD in, um, in computational biology and medicine here. And then because that, um, that training encapsulates both, you know, computational aspects and computer science aspects as well as the, the you know life sciences I'm able to then leverage my skills to do things like build a platform like all clear and, and, and some of the stuff we're doing with Minds of Jamaica because it really allows you to develop both as a scientist and you know a natural scientist and yeah. as a as a as a um technology innovator in, in that way. 
when you actually were speaking and you said computational biologist, can you yeah. break that down for us? What exactly yeah. is what exactly does that mean? Yeah, and it, in, 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 in its first form, it is essentially using computer science approaches to answer biological questions. So now, over the years, where we've had a lot of you know, when you think of a scientist, you think of the traditional you know lab coat, pipetting, doing those kind of experiments in beakers, test tubes, that kind of stuff. Those experiments generate a lot of data, right? And, um, and now we're able to even sequence the human genome so that we can electronically represent everybody's DNA. And right, that okay. is 3 billion, 3 billion nucleotides in a DNA. So for each person, that's a lot of data. And you, you know, mm -hmm. you, you hear people talk about big data and, you know, every kind of industry. And so, but really, once you're now dealing with data, you need to introduce computational approaches to um to interrogate that data and understand what exactly is that data telling you and that's when computer science really made a big big boost of course technology was always in science mm -hmm. but computer science itself and those kind of algorithms and this kind of concept really really start to introduce itself now where okay we have these experiments we've generated this data let's build algorithms and so on to read this information and make sense of it so we can look at a hundred thousand patients across multiple hospitals and identify when a particular gene is mutated when everybody has the same kind of um, disease or something. And that now gives us new insight that we didn't have before. But now that we have the computational power to do those kind of things, mm -hmm. we can start to see those trends and then that can inform treatment a lot. So that's a lot of what oh. we do. And there are different flavors of it in terms of um, how, I, you know, how you go about um, you know, being a computational biologist. But at, at, at its core, that's what you're doing. That's really interesting, actually, because um, I guess at some point we were doing that manually, which I'm sure would take so long. Because, for instance, yeah. even now with COVID, I'm sure they're using that same kind of background or persons with that same background to find these, um, you know, in order to find the cure or to find the shot that we would take in order to uh, to resist this kind of virus. So I guess that's kind of all intertwined in a sense. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so for example, a big question with COVID is what about the virus? Um, cause it to have these different um, effects in people, whether you're, you're asymptomatic or you're, you know, very symptomatic and you, and you, and you, and you um, display a lot, of, a lot of symptoms and so on. So the belief is that it might be something that is genetic. So as right. a computational biologist, you will get access to the, to the actual DNA or the actual genetic information that's in uh, um, SARS-CoV-2. And then now you're, you're trying to identify, okay, if we, get us, if we get samples from people that are asymptomatic and we get samples of the virus from people who are symptomatic, can we identify a genetic difference between it that then we, we would be able to screen to be able to predict you now if, if a particular strain is going to you know affect someone in one way or another so those are the kind of questions you would you know basically bring to a competition about yeah. to, to answer well you have to have a really technical mind i feel like in order to go into this field as well um but at, at the same time it gives you the best of both worlds because if you are into to the sciences as you said that's perfect yeah. for you but also if you do have a strong com computer background or that's something that you're very interested in yeah. as well this is perfect for you the in between i have uh, to tell you when i was at school when they did um when we did information technology yeah and they did programming i in that exam i think i wrote like i just think you remember writing read a read b and i was like yeah i'm i'm, I'm finished done. because <laughs> this is too much my brain can't handle it so <laughs> it's, it's something i encourage next level. i encourage i encourage everybody regardless of what industry you're in to to try to to have some understanding of it some exposure to it because it is going to drive so many industries right mm -hmm. and, and and so many of the things we do so the more you can have some understanding of it and be able to communicate with people who are you know very technical and communicate with people who are not not not, not technical the better you 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 you'll do but it's something that you know you have to have a, a enjoyment of it there's a unique kind of problem solving that is, that is in it but once you once you get it and once you get the idea down a lot of it is just kind of learning new language right you get the syntax you get the, the thinking down but it's something, you know, every student I talked, I was like, give it a try. Just give it a try. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, now is the time as well, because if you want to research and kind of, you know, read up and, on, and maybe find out if it is something you're interested in, I mean, yes, you guys, 
Jamaica is reopening in some sense, but at the same time, a lot of us do have some extra time on our hands, right? We don't mm -hmm. have anywhere going in the evenings. So this is a time really, we've been hearing a lot to take up courses or to do certifications or to, to you know, kind of read up on things that you may be interested in. This is the only slow time that we're getting right now. So it's perfect. Yeah. Um, so that's computational biology. And uh, outside of that, you also launched, or with that rather, you launched Minds of Initiative and Minds yes. of the Makeup. So kind of give us an idea of why you started that and, and um, where it is now as well. Yeah. So I started Minds of Initiative because I was listening to a lot of students. When I come back to Jamaica, a big thing, you know, my mama's out, my mother's always kind of preaches like, even though I left Jamaica to pursue my studies in the US, you have to seek out opportunities and ways to give back, right? It's something that you have to be very intentional about, you know, finding ways that you can help those coming behind you. And for me, knowing that I had to leave Jamaica to find out that this field existed, if, the, if, if, if a student coming behind me has to go through the same exact process just mm -hmm. to find out that this field exists, then I didn't do enough on my part, right? They should have that information much earlier. And when, so when I go back to Jamaica, when I, you know, during my PhD, I would come home, you know, I would try to, you know, give a lecture at, at, at UA, just, just talking to the computer science department or the medical department about the kind of stuff we're doing here, how we're using com computational biology in, in cancer research and cancer therapy. And so, and when I engage with students, I realized that a lot of them, even though they were in university, a lot of them were pursuing careers and having, having never spoken to someone who is in that industry, right? Yeah. They have no clue of like what it actually looks like. Hey, yes, I'm, 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 I say I'm in college and I want to be a digital marketer, but I've never actually spoken to one. I don't know what it looks like. I've Googled it, but Google will give you information on what it looks like, you know bias to, the, to Europe and the US, right? Yeah. So what does yeah. that feel look like in Jamaica? So I really noticed that and I know how big mentorship was in my own career, my own development and the access I had to it when I was here in the US. And you, you realize that students, a lot of students just don't have the access to, to those professionals, right? Depending on yeah. where you, where you grew up, depending on which high school you go to, um, those people might just never come across, come across um, your radar. So we really wanted to to say, okay, how can we help those students? How can we democratize access in such a way where if I'm in Mobe, if I'm in Chilan, if I'm in Kingston, if I'm in Portland, there is an, an avenue through which I can engage with those people who represent what I want to be, where I mm -hmm. see myself in X number of years, and speak with them about their party, about their journey. I'm here struggling right now. Did they struggle? How did they <laughs> overcome those struggles? What, um, what kind of internships did they, you know, did they take that really you know, solidified or, or, or catalyzed their success. All those kind of information right. that can, you know, help speed up my own personal development. If I am not getting that information, then you're leaving everybody to make the same mistakes, to repeat, repeat the cycle and, you know, learn, learn as they go. And uh, some people have the idea that, you know, me book my tour this way, so you have to book your tour that same way. And that's really not how it should, it should, it should operate, right? I yeah. made the mistakes and I learned a few things. I can say, all right, hey, dodge A and B and go to C because A and B just didn't work, you know, for me. And there are also times where you have to realize that A and B might not have worked for you because of your personal case. And as a mentor, mm -hmm. you can talk to them, well, you know, this was my experience with A and B, but I think, you know, it might be worth you giving a shot. Right. Anyway, right. so really just thinking critically about how do we get, get students that access and my, that's how Minds of Initiative started. It was, okay, let's use the internet. Let's democratize um, access and let's, you know, speak to the students to realize even engaging with people, say emailing with people, a lot of the, the, um, the hesitancy comes from just not knowing if that person even cares to talk to you. Remember yeah. how intimidating it is as a, as a student Absolutely. thinking of you know, engaging with, say, a surgeon or a lawyer or somebody who is a brand manager or any kind of thing. As a student, it is very intimidating. You don't know if that person will give you the time of day and so on. So what we're saying and what, as Minds of, Minds of Initiative, we want to say was like, okay, we've done that part for you. We've selected for individuals that by the mere virtue of them being on this platform is them saying, hey, I'm willing to talk to you. I'm willing to yeah. engage with you, you know, hear, hear about what, what you're doing and how I can help, you know, based on my own experience. So we've, mm -hmm. we've done that part. So all you have to do now is come on the platform and actually utilize and engage, engage with those persons. So that's what we're trying to do with our Minds of Initiative. We launched back in September. So Minds of Jamaica was kind of born out of the Minds of Initiative 
and we launched at Herbert Morrison. You know, we did a launch event at Herbert Morrison, but it's not housing any particular school. Right. Um, uh, we launched it back in September with nine mines, and now we're we're up to to 30, 30 mines across a wide variety of industries. I think a lot of people, just based on my background, they assume it's something that's only for science. Yeah. You know, the science mentorship platform, but really it's across the board because even the arts, I think the arts is, is very important and it has, there's less structure in the arts in terms of how you progress. At least as a scientist or as someone who wants to be a doctor, you know, you go, you know, you do A, then B, you know, your bachelor's, then, you know, your master's or skip the master, go to PhD and so on. As an artist, like, how do I pursue, you know, if I want to be a writer, or I want to be a poet, I want to self-publish a book, like, how do I go that route, yeah. you know? The, the only yeah. real way to get at that information is through that knowledge transfer, is through building out your, your, your network in such a way that you can pull information from those who have done it before and you know, fit that to what you're, you're trying to do. So we're just trying yeah. to give people that access. Yeah, and I mean, I think it's great. I think, uh, as you said, especially, um, I mean, even speaking from experience, when I was in, in high school and even university, mm -hmm. um, it's really a struggle because you're concerned about one, if you're in the right path, right because yeah. you have this idea of what that job is that you want but you don't actually know really what it takes to do that no. particular job and sometimes you just want to talk to somebody but as you said you're very intimidated so sometimes people are even intimidated by talking to their own lecturers you know what i mean yeah. um they, they see these people with these titles and so they're kind of turned off or shy away from speaking to them and asking questions and so i think this platform is perfect for that um, it's very, very easy as well. You just go on, you can, you know, ask questions to any mentor that you see on the site. And there's mm -hmm. even little details on each mentor so you can know what background they each have. Yeah. Um, okay. We have a question, actually. Let me see. If... Okay. Oh, so somebody asked, how can someone become a mentor? And so we comment. So, so on the website, and if you, if you just reach out to um, to our Instagram, um, we we'll, we'll, we can provide the exact link. But on the website, if you go on the be be a contributor tab, there is a form there that's called um, that is titled nominate a mind, and you can self nominate. So you can just um, submit submit that form to just let us know that you're interested in in being a mentor on the platform. We'll we'll be in touch with you. Yeah. It's very easy. Um, I, I did it as well. Um, somebody had actually completed the document for me, but you can also, as you said, you can, you can nominate yourself and yeah. um, you can give back of your time, which then leads me into the question of how important do you think it is for persons to volunteer or give back of themselves to other people? I think it's very important because what it does is you have you know, because of, by virtue of your experience, you have accrued a lot of knowledge, even if you don't realize, a lot of people don't realize just how much value they can bring, right? Yeah. And when, 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 you've, uh, when you've gone through those experiences and so on, the opportunity then to give back and volunteer your time for a cause that's bigger than yourself is something that, you know, leaves a lasting mark and it is exponential. Like you mm -hmm. impacting another person that, you know, puts them in a position to then impact another person and so on. And, and your impact just kind of grows in that way and, and, and it's something that you have to you have to be to be cognizant and always be thinking of how can i help help others because i think that is that is the core of what you're doing everything that you do you can find a way to use it as a platform to help someone else right regardless mm -hmm. of what industry you're in and i think that is the beauty of 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 what i i found here because it's something where i'm still doing what i love i'm still you know it's technological it's innovative or, or so on but it is for a much bigger purpose than than, than, than I thought. And of course, you know, in, 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 in the cancer research realm of what I do, that's mm -hmm. also for, another, for, for a bigger purpose, but being able to help my fellow countrymen and those coming behind me to really find their, their passion and their calling and set themselves up better for, for, for the future in ways that I can't even predict how it will help somebody. Right? Yeah, yeah. You, you know, in, in this moment, you, you know, you just providing access to a mentor. And, and really, it's not even about me, it's the mentors who are really giving up of themselves the time energy to help these people and and, and you realize it's very and it's, it's very it's a very reciprocal process because even in mentorship you think as a mentor um you're the one giving all the time and the person just receiving but there's a lot of value that you can get from yeah. from your mentee right and and that's the whole idea around mentorship is that is is a very um uh, mutu mutually beneficial 
um, relationship. Because even yeah. with my mentors, because you, you spent the time developing this relationship, as a mentee, you start searching out for opportunities to provide value to your mentor. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So I had a mentor of mine, I'm, you know, I've known her for maybe two years, and she's, she's been so impactful in kind of just putting stuff on my radar. Even when I was launching Minds of Initiative, she, she's in business, so she, she you know, had a lot of insights and, and a lot of advice to give me. And then recently, her son is now getting to the age where he's starting the college application process. And she mm -hmm. just, you know, she didn't really have a lot of um, insight in terms of what, what that was like. And she reached out to me to ask me how, what, what the experience was like. And then I was able to connect her with somebody I know who works in admissions at the U right. at the US, US university. So that's, that's a way where even though she was my mentor and for probably a year and a half, she was just imparting knowledge on me and I was soaking it up. Finally, I got the opportunity got to, 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 to repay. And that's the, that's the idea that um, I really want people to understand. Students are just people in general, is that even though you go into mentorship and under, understand the value of mentorship is understanding what it can do for you, it is also a nuanced thing where you are not in it to get something tangible in this, um, really. It is really just about the relationship and then what comes of it comes of it, right? Whatever benefit comes of it comes of it. You find ways to, to, to impact them. And that's the beauty of it. And, I think um, one, once you do that, you'll see it benefit, benefit you in many, many ways that you can't even imagine, right? And I think a lot yeah. of people are so used to going into relationships looking for what that relationship is going to do for them. Like, I need a job. Let me find somebody I think can hook me up with a job. And then that is the reason why I'm talking to them. I'm talking to you because I believe that you can get me a job. Yeah. Not because I'm uniquely interested in what you're, you're, you're doing and then you're uniquely interested in what I'm doing and then over time, when we build that relationship equity and we build that trust, then you know, just by mere virtue of me, you know, keeping in contact with you, you want to see me succeed. So when you see an opportunity to help me get a job, you yeah. will. I don't even have to ask for it. Yeah. You know, because yeah. we, we've just built that relationship equity. But mm -hmm. people, don't, don't, people, don't, people don't understand that. The people, you know, in Jamaica, we talk a lot about links, and I always say this all the time, is that people, you know, relationship and networking in Jamaica sometimes is, is just links. It's like, it's like, okay, I know somebody who can do this for me. You know, I have a link on my tax office, I have a link here. Mm -hmm. So I'm telling people, link, links, links is like, you know, links of a skip line, a KFC, and that kind of stuff. Networking and mentorship is about actually propelling your career and your development forward in a way that is much mm -hmm. bigger than those yeah. kind of one-off situations, you know? Absolutely. And, um, you know, even for that kind of propelling, it's not just, it can be a link. It has to be more about a relationship. Yeah. Right? It's building a relationship because, as you said, when you build that relationship too, you find not only just for yourself, but for other people, like you find opportunities just coming up. Just because you're giving up your time and you're giving to other people, other things come back to you. I mean, I think there is just this, I remember this um, song when I was little that says, like, if you, um, if you have something, give it away. If you have love, give it away and it will mm -hmm. come right mm -hmm. back to you. It's the same kind of concept. I find that when you give of your time, in whatever way you can, it always comes back twofold. Um, and it's also a great feeling as well to see that you're able to contribute to somebody else's life. Somebody yeah. said here, each one help one, as well as uh, or experiences CD though MMO says, or experiences are treasures we collect along the way. These mm -hmm. treasures can help others. I really like that. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and I've found in my experience, I, I speak about this quite a few times, is that every time I've gone into something with the goal of helping other people, I end up benefiting almost to the point where I feel like I did it for myself. So like yeah. take Minds of Initiative, for example. I went in this like really trying to think of how can I help students, right? How can I bring something of value to students to help them succeed and so on. And then since launching Minds of Initiative and it's taken on a life of its own, I would be lying if I said I didn't benefit. I, you know, my network has grown. Since, mm -hmm. since, since, since launching that. I know more people have been you know, in front of more eyes to, to be able to, to talk about it and so on. Yeah. And that way I've benefited, you know? And, 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 and that's the thing, like you go into it for the purpose of helping people and then let everything else take care of itself. Yeah, yeah. I really, really like that. I think volunteering is, uh, is absolutely excellent. I think everybody should do it. I think also mentorship, guys, if you are on this and you are interested in becoming a mentor, you can feel free to check out Minds of initiative or minds of jamaica it's in my bio as well so you can click the link in my bio um mm -hmm. i'm sure kamir also has done his page so you can find mm -hmm. out there for more information and it's very very yeah. easy 
and and uh, just just a point I, I like to make too is because in Jamaica when we talk about mentorship we automatically go to a form of mentorship that is directed for at risk youth which is an important form of mentorship but it's not the only type of mentorship and what I want to remind you of initiative is kind of expand what people think so a lot of people hear mentorship or even students and they would be like well you know I'm not somebody with behavioral problems or so on so you know I don't need mentorship right mm -hmm. that is something that is for at risk people to help get them back on track and that's you know at, at Mind Jamaica you know it is more about career mentorship and that is applicable across the board me once when I'm 40 I'll need mentors and so on and you can having multiple mentors a friend of mine described it as like having your personal advisory board it's people mm -hmm. have different experiences from you that you can go to whenever you're making a decision a big decision or, or so on and you know just get feedback get guidance yeah. and so on and it's something that's applicable across the board whoever you are it's not something that's just for you know at risk you to need help you know you know curbing behaviors and, and that kind of mm -hmm. stuff and i think in jamaica we struggle with understanding that is something that is, is is broader than that yes that type of mentorship is necessary and needed and there are a lot of other organizations that do that kind of stuff but you know it is about even even more than that and applicable to a lot more people yeah i think actually that's a very good point i didn't even think of that um but it's really true a lot of people do think that mentorship is for you know only at risk persons yep. and that's perfectly fine and yes we should support those persons definitely and help to you know propel them to get out of their current situation mm -hmm. however but this is for anybody mentorship mm -hmm. is for anyone I, I i myself as well you know i have a mentor um you know and even before in the job i am in now i have a mentor and she kind of helped to guide me to where i am now so anybody really it's just once you need some kind of guidance um, you need somebody to even bounce ideas off of somebody with experience, somebody who, you know, has a background in something that you're already doing. They yeah. have the insight that you don't have. How are you going to get that insight? So you get that from somebody who's been there already. So yeah. um, I think that's perfect and something that people should remember. And, and, and how you, and how you pre prepare that, that relationship so that you can get that insight when you need it is investing in that relationship. So over time, checking on the person, you know, if you have a mentor and you see an article in the newspaper that, you know, that would, would, would be relevant to their industry, send them the article and so on, so that you build that equity with that person. So when comes a time where you need guidance, it's not, oh, it's not a situation where, oh, I haven't heard from you in three months and then all of a sudden you have a problem. That's when I'm hearing from you. Just, you know, you, you're developing that relation just like any other relationship. You know, imagine, imagine somebody you're not close to um, Lincoln and say, hey, me need, um, me, me need your advice on this business I'm, I'm doing versus somebody who you've had constant, constant contact with and, and so on. What is your 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 response is different to Absolutely. those those individuals, and and that's all it is: is relationship equity. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, I think those are some real key points. I see some persons that are interested. I see Danny E F F S. Guys, you have some really interesting Instagram handles here. I have to say, right? Um, Danny, the name thing Liam. Very, yeah, you can go ahead, check Camir's bio or check my bio information is there. Um, and so my next question really for you is about, you know, there's so much happening right now as well as it relates to, you know, Black Lives Matter movement. Um, mm -hmm. You know, a lot of things about conversations about diversity in the in the work world, um, you know. Yeah. How important, what are your views on diversity as well as, you know, representation for the black community in the professional field? There's not enough of, there's not enough of it and we need more of it. I mean, it is something that I have had personal experience with when there is a lack of diversity. So in my field, I'm in computational biology. I've gone to present at a conference with, you know, say a thousand people and, and me being the only black person there. Mm -hmm. not, mm -hmm. not only black male, but black person. Right. And, and you, when you're in spaces like that, there's something that a lot of people don't understand that you end up because there's this you don't see yourself represented. There, there are a lot of ways it, it affects you and affects those come behind you. Somebody who is considering that field when they're not seeing anybody that look like them pursuing it automatically, subconsciously, you don't see yourself fitting into that, that, that space. Right. And, and then as somebody who is in that space and witnessing that lack of diversity, you feel this pressure that you represent your entire race or your entire an entire group even if you know even if in reality you, you don't and you shouldn't when when i'm presenting i feel as though if i mess up or i i say something that is foolish they're going to say oh see the one black person mm -hmm. here something and it, it's something i can't get away from i try to logic it out i try to 
to, 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 to speak for myself and say, obviously that is not the case and whatever, but because, you know, your eyes are seeing that, that lack, that lack of diversity, um, it, it's something that you, you, you can't really get out of. And really, it is about being intentional. I think, you know, you see a lot of companies, especially recently, you know, um, all of a sudden everybody realized that it's important. Yeah. Um, they're, 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 they're trying to be intentional about it. And you have companies who are, who are, who have roles and positions that is, mainly for, 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 for that purpose in terms of a, a, a person who is supposed to be there implementing protocols and, and, and um, programs to increase diversity. But it's something that we constantly, especially you know, in my field and many other fields, it's something that you, you're, you're constantly seeing and um, trying to think, how can, what, how, what can you do to, 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 to help that, to impact that, right? So again, a lot of these things tie with mentorship, right? So if mm -hmm. I want there to be more black scientists, I have to play a part to be present, to be visible to young black, you know, black boys and black girls to see a black scientist and be able to see themselves in that role. And then not only to see me, but make myself available. So that when they want to figure out how can they, you know, get into that space, I am ready and willing with information about how they can break in into that space. Mm -hmm. Right. And those are those are the ways that we can do our part or our, our, um, at, at Cornell. You know, we have um, I've, I've, I've worked with uh, Dr. Marcus Lambert here where we, we have these mentorship programs and summer research programs that are targeted to, to, to minority groups to get them in that space and get them seeing, seeing us and seeing that we're here. It's, you know, it's hard to see us sometimes, yeah. but we're here and we're, we're, we're there to help, help um, bring, bring it in. It really all ties together. Like it's, it's only through mentorship that you can get, you know, get, get people to break, break into those spaces really and give them the tools to succeed once they're in those spaces. Yeah. And, and you know, even to that point, it's it's uh, with mentorship as well. It's I, I feel for me personally, I feel like a part of your role as a mentor is uh, to to kind of build confidence in your mentees, so they know mm -hmm. that what it is that given field that whatever the field may be that they're, they're interested in, you know, it is possible. Um, because I found even speaking to young persons, um, you know, that they find just as you said, they may not see themselves represented in a specific field. And so they feel as though it's just absolutely impossible for them. And, you know, I think that we're here as well, just even as human beings to give back and tell persons and kind of build confidence in other people. You know, when somebody has an idea or they, they think they want to be a specific career path, you know, don't bother to, to, to pull them away from that, but kind of help to guide them or push them, you know, into yeah. that specific field because, Sometimes all you need is really that one person to believe in you and then that makes a world of a difference and you feel mm -hmm. the confidence to continue, you know. Um, I think it's really important that we do that, guys. I can't, like, I, I can't express that enough. I mean, even if my friends, for instance, you know, whenever they have an idea and they're interested in it and they're excited, I'm on it 100 with them, you know what I mean? Like, I'm there for them. And I think we also, everybody should have that same kind of mentality to, you know, really be positive in people's lives as well as to give back to other people even your friends so even if you're not going to be a mentor on minds of jamaica you know you find you there are other people that you interact with daily and if you see that mm -hmm. they need support and you know or you have that experience it is i feel like you know you should try and give back if you can to that person i think it's really really important yeah um, i mean when, when when the idea for minds of initiative came to me if i had people around me who were, you know, say negative about it, not supportive about it. There's a chance it might not exist because, yeah. you know, you're, you're as much as you want to be self-reliant and self, you know, confident and so on. You, you, no matter where you are, no matter what kind of things, you know, you've accomplished, those, those, you know, the, the, the feedback from people you trust and care about is important yeah. to you, and you, you put a lot of stock in, stock into that. So you have to surround yourself with people who are going to be supportive and, you know, people that are going to be real with you as well, but. But, but there's a balance there. And, um, and that's why even I encourage people, like there's, there's, no, there's nothing limiting you to like say having one, one mentor or someone. You can have mentors who, who provide different, you know, different relationships. Yeah. You know, they take the form of different types of relationships. So a mentor who's more of a consultant. So they are you know, really about say, using their experience to just kind of give you actionable, but they're, they're in business and giving you business advice or so on. There might be a, a, a mentor who is more of a counselor. So he's guiding you and, 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 and stuff you're doing um, based on their kind of life experience. And they might have a, a mentor who's really just your cheerleader. So, yeah. you know, it's just, yeah, yeah, you know, always hyping you up and, and a big you up and all that kind of stuff. And all of those play an important, important role, right? Yeah. In, in, yeah. in terms of how you, how you move and it's something that's important. And 
it, it's also great when you have it from external sources because yes you have you have um you know your parents are mentors a, a lot of the times and so on but you know having somebody who's kind of outside that outside of, of, of that structure who who can also you know you can have trust in and, and get that feedback from is, is is good stuff yeah guys if you have that person in life that's boosting you constantly comment in the <laughs> comment section let me see let's give a shout out to all those people who are constantly boosting us right and let's tell them thanks right now so please no comment comment and let us know who your cheerleader is and tell them thanks right now so you know what i want to know is going back to computer computational biology yeah um you know how does one really get into that field yeah if that is something you're interested in yeah, and I think is um, if if you want to get into into computer biology, I think it is important to really get exposure to both the sciences like natural sciences and both kind of computational or quantitative sciences. So like statistics, genetics, math, and then there are biology, genetics, and so on. And generally, the cool thing about computational biology, especially at the PhD level and the advanced level, is that you have people coming into it from a wide variety. Of, of, of backgrounds, all right? Mm -hmm. So when I, I joined my program, I had people who did pure mathematics in, during their first degree. I had people who did pure biology their first degree. I had people who did pure statistics or so on. And then while in graduate school, you can identify the areas of weakness because you know that computational biology is a mix of these kind of different disciplines. Yeah. So if I came from a statistics and, you know, say computer science background, then in graduate school, I'd really focus on getting my, you know, biology knowledge and genetics knowledge, knowledge, knowledge up, right? But, mm -hmm. but really, it is pursuing pursuing um, those those advanced degrees and those advanced experiences to get into that field. And I, I really encourage and I, I wish, you know, through Manager Jamaica, I want to be able to provide more opportunities for students to even get into research. Because a big issue we have in Jamaica now is that a lot of the science labs are in Kingston. So while, while, you're, while you're a student in, you know, in, in Mobile or, or, or other parts of Jamaica, it's hard for you to even get, say, a summer, a summer volunteer position in, in a lab where you can kind of just experience. Because I was lucky where... My, all, all my summers during high school, I was a part of this program called Generating Genius. So every summer I was at UWE in the bio, biology lab, the biotech labs, the robotics labs, mm -hmm. getting those experiences. But that's a very one-off and unique experience. And that is what really, you know, a lot of ways solidified my interest in the yeah. sciences. So because of that, we're using, so like Minds of Jamaica, we, we've done these virtual internships where we actually have put um, high school and university students in Jamaica in, in these virtual internship experiences with, with, with um, PhD students and university students here in the U.S. And they're doing virtually um, bi bioinformatics and computational biology analyses and, you know, a lot, of, a lot of data that's coming out of Cornell and so on. Because for me, it's about getting that exposure, right? Yeah. So, so, so pursuing opportunities like that, and I understand they're not plentiful in Jamaica, and that's something, you know, in my small way, I'm trying to address as well as best as I can. But um, if you want to, if you want to get into, into this field, I would start with just working on those core, 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 core um, skill sets, mm -hmm, right? and, mm -hmm. and then um, pursue advanced degrees as you go. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So, and you have spoken just about um, a specific group that you were in that had you go to UA. What was that? Was that specific to Herbert Morrison or no? So that was a program. It was started by Dr. Tony Sewell. He's a Jamaican, but he lived in the UK. And um, back when I was in high school. Um, they had I don't think it it, it it is operating in Jamaica now, but it was called Generating Genius. So oh, okay. it was it was a really cool program where they were, they selected from correctly like thirty thirty high school boys at seventh mm -hmm. grade across Jamaica, right? And then um, you know, those thirty boys over the, the, the course of their high school years, every summer, they're at University of the West Indies in the labs. And it was something that it, it, I, I remember when my, my mother saw it in the newspaper when I was in seventh grade, just starting Herbert Morrison, and she was showing it to me. And I, you know, as a, as a child, I'm like, Lord God, like, I have to write an essay and do the work. And again, this is where that support around me from parents, from other people. Like, you know, she, you know, my mother was like, No, you're doing this, pushing me to, to, to do it. And I just didn't want to do it because it, it was lazy. It was pure laziness. Yeah, of and then I had, a, I had a science teacher, Herbert Morrison, called Mrs. Stoddart. My mother tell her about it, and she said, Come here, you're doing it. And I'm like, they're selecting 30 boys from the whole of Jamaica. In what world am I going to get this? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That was, that was my thinking. And I, I know a lot, of, a lot of people think like that when opportunities come. It's just, you know, in, in what world are they going to pick me? Right? Yeah. So I, and I went through the process and, you know, I was selected. And if mm -hmm. I didn't at least 
give myself the chance to be selected, that would have been a huge, huge, huge miss in terms of my, my, my development, right? So I, I tell a lot of people, even when you don't think that the chances are there for you to, you know, get this internship, get the scholarship, get the, you know, college admission, whatever it is, give yourself a chance at it. Like if you yeah. don't apply, you can never get it. And then if you apply, you know, who knows? Yeah. You have to give it a chance. And, I've and seen that doesn't that would happen really, because I mean, yeah. if, you don't, if you apply and you don't get it, then you'll be exactly where you were before. But if you apply yeah. and you get through, then, you know, you're one step ahead. Yeah. 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 Um, and, you know, actually to that point, because that whole thing with your mother, I really want to speak on that because I find lots of times we, uh, when you're, when you're younger, you find that you will, um, you know, you get a lot of advice from persons, not necessarily only just parents, but even friends or, or you know, older persons mm -hmm. that are around you. And in the moment, you're kind of like, oh, that's not really interested. I'd rather just use my summers and lay down and, and you know, not bother to read because my mother told me to yeah. read two books per month for the summer period or whatever it yeah. is. Yeah, as a student, you're telling me I'm going to apply for a program where I'm going to use my summers to do more, yeah. more yeah. work. No, like, why would I do that? you know exactly uh, yeah but it's really important i think not only just even in high school but when you're in university and you're leaving university or you're, you're planning to leave university in a year it's really good to use that summer period to volunteer your time if you can or to use try to find some form of summer intern because you'll find that during that time of becoming an intern or even volunteering you make mm -hmm. those same connections that we're speaking about you build those same relationships and through yep. relationships, you end up getting a job. And, you know, yep. we all know that it's one of the major struggles that young per persons have is when you're leaving university, the opportunities are just not there for you. You end up sitting at home for months without a job. Yeah. If, if, you, if you spend your entire university years just only going to class and trying to do well, you know, on your grades and, and on your exams to get good grades, you've, you've missed a lot of what it is about, mm -hmm, right? Opportunity mm -hmm. that is there. Because... Doing that, and we're, we're always taught to, to believe that life is a meritocracy, right? I do well on my grades, I do well in school, and my transcript look good, I don't get to where I need to be. Mm -hmm. And really, a lot of your career advancement is about the soft skills, about the relationships, it's about knowing the, 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 the people who are going to put you in those positions to, 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 to succeed. And university is a great time to do that. Or even for, in my case, when I was in university, I spent my summers, again, researching in labs. Mm -hmm. And then I didn't know it at the time when I started. But because I did that research, um, that, that, that amount of research in lab, that is what actually helped me um, be able to skip a master's. Yeah. Because I was able to show that the research I would have been doing in a master's program, I had already done that, showed that commitment and done it in university. And by virtue of being able to skip the master's, I was able to avoid paying master's money. Because mm -hmm. master's mm -hmm. are generally much harder to, to fund than a PhD. As a right. PhD, my PhD is fully funded because in, in, especially in STEM, Doing a PhD, it is, you know, funding is much more available than for a master's. Mm -hmm. So me deciding to use my summers to, to do something that would benefit me, even though I didn't know it at the time, ended up saving me a whole lot of headache and money, you yeah. know, down the long run. And, and, you know, fast forward so I can get a PhD in a much faster time than if I had to do the two years of master's and then start my and PhD. Then do, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know? so, so a lot of these decisions and a lot of these um, opportunities that seem to want to not just out of our comfort zone, you're really going to benefit a tremendous lot um, at, 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 the, at the tail end of it. And it's just for either you or somebody in, in, in your corner to really say, yo, as much as you hate, as much as this thing like you're going, you're going to suck, do it. Yeah, do it. step out and do it. Step out in faith. I think to also, if you, if I mean, I don't know for anybody else here who's on this chat, but when you find yourself feeling uncomfortable, once you step through that discomfort, something great usually always comes out on the other yeah. side like every time i've experienced discomfort once i've gotten over that hurdle like it's like mind-blowing how you've completely changed and you've gone to another step or another phase in your life so sometimes we have to really go through that discomfort um somebody commented beauty and the bar said academics and grades don't work by themselves academics mm -hmm. and grades don't work by themselves absolutely i, I was telling somebody the other day about a time when I, I had interviewed position for a position. I was given that position and but they told me that because of you know rules, they had to, you know, they had to list the position on the website first for mm -hmm. at least a week and then take it down. And that really showed me that in that week that, that position was like there'll be somebody there 
that is applying to that position thinking they have a chance to get it when I already received that position yeah. by virtue of my, my, the relationship that I've built and the networking that I've done. I, and it really kind of opened my eyes to how, 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 it is, how, how this is set up where, you know, you really have to depend on those soft skills, you know, being, being somebody that can leave an impression on, on, on someone when they're speaking mm -hmm. to them. When you know, link your before that, that position even go live to say, I yeah. think you'd be great for this position. You'd fit in with the company culture, all that kind of stuff before, before that, that position even becomes available to the general public. And that's yeah. how a lot of positions are filled nowadays. So you're there blindly submitting your resume, thinking there's a chance when somebody already got that position a long time and it's just, it's just a formality why they list it on the website. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's because that person was giving up their time or working through something at that same company or building a relationship with the person yeah. who's supposed to be doing that hiring. And so building all of that is there we're able to get the opportunity so guys it's really important nola pv says volunteering is key apart apart from occupation it helps some to finalize their career choices yeah exactly absolutely i agree with that 100 percent um kamir because you know this is like an oh one instagram where you us yeah i was watching the time, I was <laughs> it, the time. It, was, <laughs> it was great speaking with you it really was i think this is an exciting conversation you left a lot of yeah. gems with us I think a lot of us know as well know a lot more about computational biology, myself included. Um, and we also know, understand, or you know, we, we get to hear feedback from somebody about how important mentorship and yeah. volunteering is um, you know, for each of us. And again, guys, remember you can check out Minds of Initiative. It's the link is in my bio, it's in Kamira's bio as well, or you can mm -hmm. it, it comes up on your Google and feel free to give up your time. Is there yeah, we do, we do, I was just saying we're doing a giveaway right now that Ooh. ends tomorrow, so you can hurry up and go on the page and, and enter the giveaway. Giveaways, okay. guys. <laughs> Thank you so great. much for joining us, Kamir. It was great. Thanks a lot. To be with you. Happy to be here. All right. All right. Take care.